Hello, my name is Sasha Dovshet, and today I will speak about Lesia Ukrainka, a Ukrainian modernist writer, anti-colonial thinker, and a pioneering feminist who turns 150 years old in 2021. Chosen at the ten tender age of 13, her pseudonym means literally Ukrainian woman, which does sound quite old fashioned if we do not take into account that with her work, Lesya Ukrainka reinvented what it meant both to be a Ukrainian and a woman of her time. I will try to introduce you to some of her groundbreaking strategies that undermined the traditions of Russian imperialism, Ukrainian populism, and this rare cultural and social phenomenon we call patriarchy. To begin with, uh, Lesya Ukrainka rejected a provincializing paradigm imposed upon Ukrainian culture under the Russian rule. A multilinguist in command of nine languages, she chose to write in Ukrainian, which was effectively banned in the Russian Empire until 1905. And while Ukrainian literature was dominated by the populist ideologies that identified Ukrainian people with peasantry, Lesya Ukrainka's imagination was not stirred by that vision. Instead, she populated her poetic dramas with characters from scripture, classical mythology, romantic poetry, and medieval legends. Mixing Ukrainian anti-colonial subtext with European cultural context, she rewrote some of the chief Western myths from a woman's point of view. Uh, speaking of chief European myths, in 1912, Lesya Ukrainka's poetic drama Stonehost became the first story of Don Juan in European letters written by a woman. I am quite aware that this is impudence, she admitted in a letter to her friend, proud nevertheless that she authored the Ukrainian version of what she called a global theme. Moliere, Hoffman, Byron, Pushkin were among her predecessors. Her impudent retelling of the famous story transforms Don Juan, the great romantic sinner and seducer, into a plaything of his supposed conquest, Donna Anna. The hero obviously wants to free her from the shackles of her unhappy marriage and does what he is good at. He kills her husband and offers her to flee. And this is the response that he gets. Don Juan. Anna, let's run away. Anna, haha. Don Juan, it's funny. Anna, had I not laughed, then certainly I'd yawn. Surely you'd not prefer that. Ah, oh, signora. Now it's the third time that I've heard these words and it can get quite tedious. I see you're indeed stone without soul or heart, though not without good sense, you must admit. Oh, I admit you that. Then tell me why we ought to run away now. What's the point? When you seduced young girls and stole away wives from their husbands, then it was not strange that it turned out you ran away with them. And he who's banished is a fugitive, of course. But why is one to send oneself to banishment? For what cause? Just to take a widow who is dependent upon no one? Think for yourself, is it not farcical? And what I be to you if I fled with you into the world now? Certainly only a toy for a short while. Oh, Anna, there is no one that I loved as I love you. To me, you seem to be a holy shrine. Why are you laboring then senselessly to pull the shrine down from its foundations? Because I want to have it here, alive, not just of stone. The stone is necessary if one wants to build on firm foundations, one's life and happiness. The translation is by Vera Rich. Donna Anna is the unmistakable new woman of the turn of the century. She persuades Don Juan, the self-proclaimed freedom fighter, to sacrifice his freedom and fight alongside herself for the throne, the ultimate symbol of social hierarchy. 
Donna Anna's manipulative power compensates for her overall powerlessness within this patriarchal society. However, the society can silence her no longer. As a woman writer, Alessia Ukrinka must steal the language from patriarchy to change the life and literature that she inherited. And lo and behold, what those cultural patriarchs saw as universal themes turn out to be only partial fragments that shyly turn away from women's experience. Lesya Ukrainka comes to the scene to shed some light on that other part of the story.